Hello world. It's Patricia O'Connor and Frida Reba Darcy here. Look at what we have here. We have a Trident Maple. It is on the turntable. Uh, I don't know if you can see her in the foreground, but I have Frida Reba Darcy standing by receiving her per diem. And now I'm gonna uh, wobble my butt here behind all of this and grab up, uh, and grab up my scissors. We're gonna do a little bit of prune work. Can you see me? Can you see me back here? We're gonna do a little bit of prune work on this trident maple. Uh, I'm not going, I don't intend to do any wiring to this tree or to wire this tree. Everything I intend to do with this trident maple will be uh, clip, clip and grow, as it were. So, uh, this is a quick look at it. Uh, it still has quite a, quite a few leaves on it. And I also have a little bit of cleanup down here to do as well. Looking this way. I'm gonna weed for a minute. We're not gonna go, I'm not gonna go too hysterical, but I will take a minute and pull up some of these lumps of clover. And then I can do the rest of this. <laughs> I can do the rest of this on my time. I don't think, uh, I don't think, you know, Weeding is very much, I'm not gonna say weeding isn't a part of bonsai, but I don't have some special weeding skills that uh, I need to be rolling time on to, uh, to show you. I can be doing this while I uh, watch cartoons or something. Uh, also, I have, I have, uh, I have a movie on standby, I think tonight. Uh, I may break down and watch. I may break down and watch Oppenheimer. I think, I think that would be fun. That would be a, uh... Yes, you do. Okay, now, our debts have been paid. I've paved the way. Uh, we've removed a little bit of clover. We've done some of the non non-fancy essentials and now we're going to oh, uh, sunshine on the back on my shoulders too feels very nice okay feels nice those are wire cutters those are stand up tonight or today i should say i'm using um going to be using Stainless steel tools, they don't have as good an edge on them as my Japanese tools. What's that? I don't know. I don't think that. They don't have as uh, good an edge as my Japanese tools, but uh, everything here is soft and wet. So uh, I'm leaving my uh, blued steel tools put away. Now, you see me removing removing these leaves uh, I don't mind if I leave the stick I mean the stem uh, that doesn't that doesn't hurt anything uh, what you do want to take note of and see if you're doing this and if you think you're doing this stop is uh, at the base of these is the follicle and uh, we can damage those and we are uh, supposed to not be damaging the follicles that will uh, affect next year's that will affect next year's leaf production as far as these guys out here on the end uh, they're about to get cut off anyway so it won't it will not make as much of a difference on those guys. But uh, take notice what's coming off when you pluck these leaves off. And as long as you're just plucking the leaves off, fine and good. If it looks like 
you might be uh, taking off the follicles, either uh, stop that or grab up the scissors and do it that way. Uh, I've also seen people do it with uh, tweezers. I just do them with my hands. Now, this is end of year just to get all the stuff off because it means it, uh, well, for one thing, you can see me better. Which, to my way of thinking, is a big plus. Uh, but also, uh, it helps us to see what we're working on. And uh, when we get all of that out of the way, we can focus on, you know, we can focus, better focus on our, on our tree. Uh, this lack of leaves is typically why trees that shed their leaves in the winter get uh, glazed off, which is to say, they get pots with a splash of color since the pines and the, most of the other conifers don't lose their leaves and green year around we go we go with the, the uh, unglazed and that's going to be a purple or a brown maroon kind of kind of color of the unglazed pot and that's that is that's a great that's a great color for those trees but uh, they also, because it balances well against the green, and um, I think what I hear most people describe is the masculine um, form of those tree types. Now, uh, you could, uh, by that same token, I think if I wanted to, I could plant my uh, Dawn Redwood and uh, my Ball Cypress of all cypress in uh, a glazed pot that has some color and uh, in fact when it does come time to up, up pop this I will probably put those that large planting in uh, a shallow rectangle that maybe has a light green like like a, uh, when you look at bayous sometimes you see this this green film on the top of it that really isn't film those are like tiny little tiny little one leaf plants uh, I've heard it called alligator grass um, it can be a nuisance it can uh, deprive uh, if you have a pond it will deprive the pond of oxygen and kill the fish it will shut down photosynthesis further down in the uh, in the water because there's, it makes a tent or a canopy, those little things do, they're so prolific. So you'll see places where it grows, it'll be like a law or something that you hose your boat off before you leave so you're not, so that uh, they're trying to reduce the spread of those. But it's pretty, it's a bright, bright green. And when you see it in places where it's supposed to be or where, it's, where it grows naturally, it'll, it'll take something and just, make it look so uh, kind of an effervescent green color and so why I'm talking to you about alligator grass is I think a, uh, a rectangle pot I'm going to all the trouble to de-leaf that knowing full well that I'm about to cut this off. Uh, I think a rectangle pot for my three trees uh, cypress grouping that uh, was glazed and maybe had a crackly finish and uh, um, was that same type of green would be very 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 attractive this pot is yellow for this trident maple that's not uh, yellow is not a bad color especially when you see that um, against the red leaves these trees you know i mean yellow and this color this salmon color red uh, it is a beautiful combination and red and yellow do go very very well together however i've never liked this pot it's uh i think it's i think this is the, basically the kind of pot you get 
when you buy something, when something is an imported tree from uh, a bonsai nursery that deals in, in mass produced trees. I think this is one of those type of pots. And I think in its, in its early going, uh, that's what kind of tree this was. This was uh, probably a mass produced bonsai tree. Okay, now I haven't gotten all the, all the leaves out, but that's, that's about all we really, really, really need. Okay, I'm going to cut this early, and here's why. There was a spider, that spider. I don't want to run him off. You, you're more than welcome. Now he's, he just repelled down to the table. You're more than welcome to stay, little leaf hopper. I uh, cut that branch off below where he was standing so that I wouldn't knock him off and then he currently saw me do that and fell down the tree. I thought I would like to cut that off at in a spider-free environment would be here. All right, so here's what. This roll of buds is going to be uh, what I hope this branch will vibricate out from. So I'll go just a little bit above that to allow for some dieback. And then we're going to give that a snip there. Uh, and then based, based on that, we will act. We will act accordingly. I'm staggering these some. You don't want to do it like a haircut. This needs to have a little bit of, uh, this needs to have a little bit of uh, uh, some of all of it. You know, it needs to be varied in their length so that it looks natural as well. That's what I'm trying to say. This stuff that's going straight up, we can do away with some of that. Uh, some more of it, we just know or keep it in keep it in the back of our mind that these guys are going to bifurcate out anyway. We're going to turn. And this is some, this is, uh, you can see this. This was last year. This is what we got. Boom, that's what we got. And now we've got that. And we're about to get this. These are quickly made decisions, but they're not life or, well, I guess they're not life or death for the next life. But, um, you know, this is just aesthetics based on, on what, uh, you know, we know that all of these little cuts that we're making should vibricate off and make two, and that should, uh, that should be helpful. We should be starting off shorter on these ends and get slightly longer, slightly longer towards the middle. I want to let this guy go a little longer because we're moving our way up the tree. But some of them are not a bad height either. But um, this is the same deal as what you've heard. You guys have heard me talk about when it comes when it comes to our cork bark oak. When you have a branch, when you have the end of a branch, this end will be full of hormones. And the amount of hormones that are here will send a whistle to the tree that this is the apex of the tree. It wants more energy to go here and less energy to go here. So when we cut this, say this was already the perfect length, but we wanted it to branch out more. If we cut the end off here, we're going to release those hormones. And that hormonal release will cause more buds to come out here. Because all of a sudden it's like, um, word has gotten out that the dominant part of the tree has disappeared and all the other parts of the tree, for all they know, this might be their time to shine. They could be the new, they could be the new king in town. And so, uh, when you, that's part of the reason why we trim back is to not only keep our tree short, and not only, because when we prune, a lot of times when we prune back, we take one and we prune it back and then we get two, and then we prune those two back and we get four. 
and then we prune those four back and we get eight. And then we prune those eight back and we get 60. And that's just how we roll. And where I live in California, I have to worry about trees running themselves out of energy and, and harming themselves. Because a lot of times we don't get a proper, a proper winter for uh, some species of trees that are uh, cold hardy, which is to say that they are used to uh, having a proper winter or, or having that be something that they are subject to. Without that proper winter, sometimes they don't shut down. And if they don't shut down, they don't rest. And if they don't rest, they run out their resources and die. Putting the ends of this, even though they're good links, because I want that to bifurcate off. This, yeah, I'm just gonna cut that there. I almost thought about cutting that back. This bridge back shorter. I don't know how well you can see of that, but it looks a little misshapen. But I think when it bifurcates out, it'll be fine. It'll be natural, and um, everything doesn't have to be a manicure. You know, it's supposed to be a tree. It's supposed to have. We're not supposed to make it look manicured like uh, a topiary, we're uh, supposed to have something that looks nice like a tree. Did I leave that too long? Maybe. I like that better. Okay. So, this is, we're just continuing to pop these little guys back. Um, Trying to, uh, now by staggering them a little bit, we're going to allow, whenever this starts bushing back out, uh, all of those leaves will uh, block off other parts of the tree. So by staggering this, um, we are going to help everybody uh, get more light. And I'm not the most, I, I will totally tell you guys right off, I uh, am not the big maple authority. Uh, I've had this tree for a couple of years and uh, not messing it up is my claim to fame when it comes to this trident maple. I don't think that I've, I don't think that I've elevated it a whole lot uh, the way I would like to think that I have some of my other trees. Uh, I've also kind of found uh, the last couple of years discouraging when it came time to uh, be able to do things like what I'm doing now. It's not a perfect season for that here. It, um, this isn't the best place for these, is what I'm told. However, this tree was here when I bought it. I didn't, I didn't haul it in from some place that is, I didn't haul it in from someplace that was tried to make a mecca. It was always been a Bay Area tree. Uh, but last year, for instance, I waited until January or February. I'm not seeing a lot of moisture coming out of the ends of these green tips. That's that's good. That is that that's good. What you don't want is you don't want to see a lot of uh, a lot of syrup or sap or whatever. That is the energy that the tree has made, and that amount of uh, bleed out uh, comes at their expense. That amount of, of bleed out comes at their expense. Also, the thing you're not supposed to do with maples is stain up the trunks by doing big carving work at the wrong time of year, which will cause, uh, which will cause them to uh, pour out all of that sap and that stains and it's kind of like, uh, it leaves a stain on the tree. And that's, a, that's supposed to be when it comes to maples, I think, a bit of a no, a bit of a no, we don't do that. back to there. All right. 
There you go. Uh, questionable if I saw if I saw a little wet bubbles forming on the end of these. They're tiny, tiny, tiny. It's almost a waste to try to put, I think, maybe, to try to put uh, little pieces of cut paste on the ends of those. But I don't see them weeping a whole lot either. It's 56 degrees up here, and um, our lights are going to be going off in a few minutes. So I think that's pretty much. I think that's pretty much got us going now for next year. Uh, everything got back, got cut back shorter. All these long guys, you can kind of see they're all sweeping, swooping. It's because of the way the tree was faced on the bench. They favored the way they're on. Uh, the direction all of that new growth is taken. It's kind of doing that stuff. Uh, I've taken some of that out by cutting those branches uh, two-thirds of them off. And uh, when those fabricate out, we should be okay. But the direction that was going wasn't because of the sun. It was because of our life. That was, it was facing the sun out there where you are, and this was the light and everything, is, as you can see, given the choice between Del Sol and full spectrum LEDs, two feet overhead, they, everything swept back towards there. I think when all this stuff vibrates out, we should be, uh, we should be okay. Uh, all right, that is our Trident Maple cutback for this year. I waited last year. At this time, I went, no, I'll, I'll wait until, you know, it gets cold enough. And I know, you know, um, in February, the tree was still flushing out green leaves. I mean, we might have had some time like this where it got kind of in the middle, but then we kept getting warm spells because it's California and it does that. And every time it did, it was like, well, it's not the time. It's not the time. It's not the time. And uh, here in the Bay Area, if, if you're trying to do it right and you listen to what they tell you, you can just look at a tree and go, yeah, it's just never the right time here, is it? So that's what's going on there. If you have an opinion as to what I've done, you... Uh, Feel free, feel free to jump in and give me your thoughts. I uh, would love to hear them. I, I could be pulling up more information on Trident Maples, but um, kind of, I have seen some that I've absolutely fell in love with. I was just like, saw one once and I'm like, where's my checkbook? And he's like, no, I'm putting this in a show. You can have it later. And after that, I started doing Japanese black pines, and after that, I kind of, I kind of, um, I kind of fell out of love with these, although I still admire them. Uh, that's like I've never fully fallen in love with junipers either, although I'm totally open. I'm totally open to that. There's no, there's no uh, bias, there's no bias, or there's no juniper junk in the back of my mind. I'm, I'm, I'm all about them. Uh, I just don't, I don't know. Uh, I haven't gotten the bug yet. That's, that's how I would say that. There's nothing wrong with those trees that having a bug that getting the, that seeing them in that certain light and going, yeah, I need to do me a mess of those. Wouldn't take care of it. But, um, yeah. Um, hmm. Pulling more weeds. The clover is just really, man, I wish. I wish uh, clover was it. I'm sure somebody somewhere probably thought to bonsai clover. I wonder what that would, I wonder what that would look like. Like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. We uh, are going to uh, bring something in tonight and put it on the bench and we will cut it or wire it or bend it or fold it or, or God knows, hopefully we won't kill it. But uh, that's going to be what we're going to do there. And uh, I appreciate you, and Frida Reba Darcy appreciates you, and uh, thank you so much for watching.
Yeah. I'm gonna waddle my fat butt over there and turn off, turn off camera. Uh, you know, a remote probably wouldn't have been a bad idea. Also, there's an app where you can clap your hands, but not all that heavy. All right, thank you so much for watching. We'll do that.